Hello and welcome to another episode of Linux and Code. Today's topic is going to be Node.js and Express with Docker. And if you don't have Docker installed or don't want to use it, that's fine. There will be some minor adjustments you'll have to make, but I will be talking about using it in this video, so just be aware of that. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a project folder for the application we're going to be making. And I'm going to start off with something I'm going to call core because I really want it to be reusable in future projects and something I can go off of in the future. So I'm going to make a directory here called core and then I'm going to do a git init to create a git repository to do source tracking and then I'm going to do an npm init and kind of just hop through these options. I'm going to change the default entry point to server.js, and I'm not going to put a test command in for now, and I'll also leave the git repository empty. Put in my name for the author, and I'm going to MIT license it. And now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and go open that folder with my IDE, which I'm using VS Codium, which is a variant of Visual Studio Code. Okay, so with my IDE open, I'm going to open up a new terminal, and in here I'm going to make a new docker compose file. And I prefer to use docker compose files over docker files because they just make more sense to me. We want this to be the version 3 syntax at least. You could use a later one if you want some of the other features. And now we have to declare our service. So the first one uh, that we're going to start with is just going to be our API server. So let's just call it uh, core API. And now we get to declare the things that are in it. And we need an image, and we're going to want some sort of node image, but I don't know the exact name. So I'm going to hop over to Firefox and just search for a node.js Docker image. And we want the hub, and I want the LTS version of node, so I'm going to use 8.12.0 dash alpine. So that's what we want right there. Uh, I can't copy paste this, but it should be pretty easy to just remember that. <laughs> Bear with me if I have to retype it a time or two. So we're going to do 8.2.12, excuse me, point zero and dash alpine. And now that we have that, we can move on. And we're going to do a working directory. And this can be really whatever you want it to be, right? So we're going to do uh, slash home slash core API. And with that, we then want to also mount our local instance of this in that directory. So we're going to do volume and we want our current directory uh, mapped to the home slash core API. And that's what we want for our volume. And for our command, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do command. And this is where you could leverage a local Docker, Docker file as well if you didn't want to use Docker Compose, but I'm just doing it all here. Uh, I'm going to execute a command npm install. And then going to run. I'm sorry, this should still be in this bracket. Run dev, which we haven't set up yet, but we will. And we can add an environment flag. Um, we may use it more later, but the very least we're going to do right now is put the node environment and set it to development. We don't depend on anything else right now. We will want to map a port so that we can access our server. And just kind of as a default for me, I like to use 3000. So I'm going to map the internal port to the external port 3000 uh, both ways. Nothing crazy there. And save this file. Now I made this script uh, npm run dev, and that currently doesn't do anything because it doesn't exist. So we're going to come over here. And in here, we have a pretty vacant package.json. So 
we're going to want to fill that up with some dependencies at least. We know we're going to need um, Express, and we should probably get a little bit of security in there. Helmet is a, a decent package for that. It's not a silver bullet, but it does definitely help. We'll start with those two and add more as we go. And a development one that we will want is Nodemon. So we can use that for live reloading of our API. So again, we'll do an npm install. Now for that test script that we made, this npm run dev, we really just need to create the dev tag inside of our package.json. So all this is going to do is leverage nodemon that we just installed. If we look in our node modules folder, we actually have this .bin that gets created and we're gonna leverage that for this. And the period slash is to reference our current directory once again, and then slash dot bin slash nodemon. And you can see that maps to that path right there. And we're gonna save this. Now in theory, we should be able to execute our Docker file. However, first we're gonna to wanna to also make something we're gonna to wanna to make two files actually, um, a .gitignore and a .dockerignore. And the reason we're doing this is the Docker ignore, we just want it to install node modules on its own. We don't want it to copy them from our system. This is useful, especially in the case where you're using Docker on a system like Windows and it's connecting to Linux VMs, the binaries are compiled differently for some of the uh, some of the sub packages, and so you don't want to you don't want to share them between the system. We're actually going to copy the same thing and put it in our git ignore because you don't want those sources getting um, or those modules getting committed to your project because it will really balloon your source tracking. So now that we have this. We can come back to our command line. We can run docker compose up. If you don't have docker installed or you don't have Node.js installed, I have a couple of videos on getting them running that you can go watch. Now we're getting an error here, probably from a typo of some sort that I made. Yeah, so right here I'm missing the closing single quote. Let's try that again. We have another error. And this time it's probably with my JavaScript code or the lack thereof. As you can see, it's looking for server.js, which doesn't exist yet. So let's make that. Okay, now that we have our server.js file, we can start actually working on our API. We know the core of our application is going to be written with Express. That's what it's included for. But what else are we going to need? Well, let's start with Express and find out. We also already installed Helmet, so we can set that up as well. So next we're going to establish our application core and we're gonna do that with declaring a constant app and we're gonna set it equal to express. So we're using the express framework that we brought in here with this require statement, which is just like saying, hey, include this chunk of code. And then we're executing express's default function, setting whatever that comes out as equal to app. Now that we have Express initialized, we can actually use it to establish an HTTP server that will listen for requests coming from browsers or REST clients or whatever the case may be. So to do that, 
we're going to first declare another constant. We're going to call it server, and we're going to require HTTP, and then call dot server app. And this dot server function is actually coming directly off of the HTTP module from Node.js itself. It's not anything else we need to install. Another thing I'm going to do here is set up the port that we're listening to. So I'm going to say a constant port equal to process dot environment or a e e env dot port. And this way, when we're running this application later from wherever, if we need to change the port that it's running on, we can easily pass in an environmental variable to do that and not have to come in and manually change the code base. However, we won't always want to specify that when we're doing like development, and we've already set up our Docker file to use port 3000. So I'm going to put in an or statement. So if that's not defined, we're just going to run on 3000 by default. Now, we have our server and we have our port, but we kind of need to mesh the two together to get things going. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say our server is going to listen on port. And that's all we need to do. Now, if we save this, this restarts and it's just sitting here listening. So we can come in and actually make a get request. On port 3000. And you see, we get back a 404, but that's good because that means our server is listening. If our server wasn't listening, this wouldn't have returned anything to us at all. So our server is running. Now with our server running, we can actually start doing more interesting things with Express, like creating routes. But unfortunately, we don't have time to cover that in this video as this is already too long as it is. So if you wanna hear more, leave a comment, leave a like, do whatever you need to do. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day. Take care.